nurse, your friend, how is she doing? Who is it? Cindy. The, oh, the... Cindy. She's been very good, and she's made uh, she's making very good progress. It seems. Great. And and uh, she's been involved in uh, several of these check-ins now. So you know, I expect her to. Um, I, I expect her to be here today. Even um, okay. I'm hopeful she will be. Um, so she, did she give you a copy of that list of uh, herbs and things? I'm very interested in that. I having no immune system, especially having lupus, which is now extremely active. Right. Um, if you've got a copy of that, hi Nancy. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't receive that, but I have a chat going with her on text messaging right now. So let me uh, just uh, just uh, ask her right now. Okay. Yeah, I would like a copy of that because the more things that I can do herbal based is better for me than I mean right now I'm on like five prescriptions. But hey, I'm sitting up and I'm kind of talking. Yeah. Nancy's been helping me. God bless you, dear. It's so good to see you. Hello, Nancy. <laughs> my she, has been my, she has been my angel. I don't know how I ever would have gotten through Easter Sunday without her. <laughs> Thank you so much. I was so alone Easter Sunday. I'm just not used to that. So your wow. email meant the world to me. Well, I felt alone too. You know, my monastery was closed and there were no videos or anything like that to go to. Nothing. So yeah, there was an emptiness, wasn't there? I know it was just, uh, I did, it, I didn't last very long, but I sat at the piano and opened the, I'm in a building that has four condos in it, four women, you know, one, one divorced and three widows including me, as you know. Um, and I sat and opened my door and opened my solarium door and played uh, hymns. And everyone came out in the hall and listened. So oh, that that's was great. beautiful. I didn't last too long, but I, just playing the piano really helps me. Oh, yes. And what a gift to the others. What a gift. They were, yeah, even, even her name is Lois, but she goes by Louie. Even Louie came out and she's Jewish. So <laughs> and she absolutely loved Ava Maria. Oh, <laughs> that's it is beautiful. Yes. Hi, Gray. Hi, Gray. Welcome. Nice to see you. Cindy is coming on, I think. Hi, Nancy. And, Hi, Skip. How are y'all? Miles. <laughs> we're we're hanging in there. I like the I like the Bollinger edition. When did you when did you make that up, Gray? Uh oh, uh, I don't know, three or four days ago. And, your head uh, is your head is uh very well placed in between the two spires I, I, and, and I and and my guess is with you Skip that's rather intentional. No it wasn't intentional okay. but <laughs> that's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just it, it's the one picture I could grab on short notice and I haven't had time to find a more appropriate one like you know a nice set of shelves of books <laughs> that, that makes me look very intellectual. That's what all the guys that are are uh, now on on uh, cable channels use. You know, they, really, yeah. they, pre they pretend they're sitting in front of a of a group of books. Here comes Cindy now. Uh, and, uh, she'll be well, this was the first time in my life I've ever spent Easter outside of church. That was really weird. And I did, I did participate in a couple of Zoom services, but man, it was still very strange to be alone on Easter. Yeah. Did, did you get a chance to look at the, the rest of our check in? No, I didn't. Um, well, you should do because it, it was a very rich session in, oh, many, good. in many ways. And there, there was a lot there. And uh, Cindy has joined us. Um, and uh, maybe she can. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are Just you trying feeling? to get myself together? Oh, OK. Well, uh, you don't have to show yourself until you're together. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I just sent that um, that list to you again to Gmail. Okay, I, I'll uh, I'll find it and uh, right now and put it on the um, uh, I'll put it on the chat here. Um, now there's a 19 page paper that explicitly describes it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that and there's also a two page paper that I condensed it down to mm -hmm. and then what I just sent you is a one page uh, protocol recipe okay. that, that condenses it down to the bolts and nuts alright great uh, alright I'm not seeing it yet but uh, things are slow um I had a, a notice from Zoom today that they're now going to, um, now they're now going to allow you to select what regions uh, you want your Zoom going out to. And uh, I'm presuming, and to restrict it now, I'm presuming that this is to protect the educational um, Zoom calls that go on every day now. And, um, and so um, I'm trusting that they're gonna keep, you know, allowing access from places like India. Uh, I've, been, I've invited a couple of Indians uh, today and, um, and uh, in the next few days, I'm going to be in, inviting uh, quite a number of my colleagues because they they live all over India. The people who worked with me for uh, 25 years, one way or another, <laughs> and so uh, we may get uh, some more over time. I, I have to gather together their uh, email addresses and and. Uh, invite them, which I will do. And um, I'm wearing black today because I'm in mourning about the loss of Thomas Arst. And I, I just want to share with you uh, his picture. Um, this is this is Thomas in front of the uh, Dr. Young Stone at Bollingen. And uh, Sadly, he died Sunday uh, from a heart attack. And uh, I was, you know, ever since last summer, I've been looking forward to meeting him. And I was to, I was to meet him uh, in, in Aranos a week from today, tomorrow, a week from tomorrow. And uh, unfortunately, that's never to be now. So very sad about that. And, um, and I'm exploring with Chiron Publications how we can do a, a suitable in memoriam uh, for him. What I'm, what I've been thinking separately from Chiron. So I haven't heard. I've heard from Murray Stein, who thinks it's a good idea, but I haven't heard any official attitude from uh, Chiron Publications, and. I think you all know that he's the co-editor of this book, uh, Jung's Red Book for Our Time, Searching for Soul Under Postmodern Conditions. And he was the, the guiding force, the, the, uh, the real spirit behind this effort. And uh, his essay is the first one in the series and it's extremely profound. It's in volume one. And so I think everyone should read that essay. And uh, what, I'm, what I'm sort of thinking of doing is um, writing to, they kindly gave the email addresses of all these union analysts all over the world who participated in this project. So I have the first three volumes here. And, I think I'm going to uh, write to um, the participants in the volume and ask them if they want to come on to one of our check-ins 
and uh, just talk about Thomas from their point of view over the next uh, couple of months. And in Buddhist tradition, uh, the morning period is 49 days. And so I'm sort of thinking in terms of that over the next couple of months to invite these people in, maybe a few of them will join us and share their reflections on Thomas and their reflections on the project itself, which is an extremely important project. And I'm looking forward to working with it in the advanced reading group, but that's for another day. But that's, so I, if any of you have any thoughts about how we could do this, let me know and uh, I'll, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can put together something that's meaningful. Um, so um, go ahead, I, I didn't mean to shut down the conversation. <laughs> I'm gonna shut up. I'd just like to say that my heart goes out to you, Skip. You were close and he was a very special mentor in your life. You've known him for at least three years and uh, have talked to him, worked with him, look forward to seeing him at Aranos and then the virus hit. And now he has gone on. So I just uh, wish you peace. Well, uh... He knew what he did, like Dr. Young. He, he too knew what he was doing and he did it. Um, and uh, he, he actually, according to the information I have, he, he actually did not die from the virus. He actually had a heart attack on Sunday morning, um, two mornings ago. Um, but, um, you know, I guess we don't know because they're saying that some, some heart attack deaths are actually coronavirus deaths. I, I just don't know. I, and I'm looking forward to seeing something more from uh, his family as time goes on. I looked, I looked at his uh, Facebook page today and there's no hint that he's died as yet. Um, and uh, so uh, I'm trying to find, is it the Durkheim Institute? Yes. In Germany? It, yeah, the I, Dur was, Durkheim's, Durkheim Center. Durkheim Center. Okay, I just was wondering if they have something posted, but I haven't found. I'll keep looking, see if there's something. Yeah, I know they have a website. So if you find that, please share it with us, Miles. Um, Ah, uh, so Gray, how's school going? No football this year, probably, huh? We're, I, you know, I, I, I would, I, I, we're operating under that impression, but I, I, I assume, I assume, you know, kind of every, I, I, I think, you know, if, if the, if some of the trends continue, I, I think, by the end of, you know, it, it seems like maybe by the November-ish, you know, there, I think, I think one of the biggest things is we have to get, and this is something that, that I think is now starting to happen, you know, we've just got to find a way to get mass testing to as many people as possible, and it needs to be on the community level, right, sure. it doesn't need to be on the, and I, I think we're, we're very fortunate here in Macon to have two very kind of smaller independent hospital chains and um you know I, I think a lot of a lot of the good medicine is coming from places like that where they can uh where they can operate and focus data on a smaller population rather than treating everybody at the same time which is kind of i don't know if y'all have been following this there's been backlash on social media about nurses and doctors dancing and, and things like that when they're not doing COVID work. But, you know, people just don't grasp that there are some sections that work COVID. There are some sections that are, you know, that, that those nurses aren't in those 
anyway, and um, but I do think these smaller hospitals and in some of these smaller communities is probably where a lot more movement's going to happen. Um, I, I am very hopeful for enough mass testing, though, to where, especially, I mean, and it's not just for kids, but for everybody. Like, you sure. know, I mean, goodness gracious, how long can we keep children locked inside? I mean, it's one thing for me. To, I mean, I'm fine. Like, I, yeah, that doesn't bother me. Like, I, you know, I, um, you can write a book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and. But I, I've, I, have, I have experienced a good bit of creativity in terms of teaching. Um, I'm really working on collective note taking through, um, through some Google documentation. Um, we're pretty close on establishing and kind of holding our curriculum from the school base, which has been something that I've been working on um, with some other teachers. It's, it, it's, I, I will say this, it seems like when I encounter a kid, even through chat, like we're doing right now, um, it seems to be more meaningful to them than it was in the past. So, you know, I, I hope that, I hope that for those of us who remain healthy and those of us who remain kind of functioning properly, that the gratitude uh, the gratitude increases, right? I mean, I, I just think that's something that we've been missing, you know, is, yeah. is the gratitude for the daily, you know, for the, for the day to day shit, you know, and, and we want to avoid the day to day shit and live on peaks and live in valleys and peaks. And it just, you know. Yeah. I think so um, we're, we're going to end up with a kinder, gentler society in the future. Oh. I have that impression because just uh, Debbie and me going out, we're wearing our masks, of course, but we just walk around our community um, and we're fortunate to live in a gated community. Um, and it's mostly old people, okay? It's not officially an old people's community, but, but it's uh, mostly old people. And um, uh, people, seem to be lightening up. They seem to be uh, greeting more in a more pleasant way than they were before. You know, it's no longer the hi <laughs> type thing, but it's actually um, wanting to talk and wanting to communicate. And I think if this goes on for uh, very long, it's going to cause a lot of people to change. It's a, it's a big uh, collective unconscious uh, change that's coming to us. Um, I've been pushing and kind of speaking into the world. I think I've probably said it here that I'm hopeful for the world's largest ego death. Just, just get rid of it all. I understand some shadow would pop up, but I mean, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, well, it's definitely going to tamp down some egos. Um, I hope so. I really yeah. do. It right. this the, the age of certainty. And even as Arndt, as as uh, as Thomas Arndt said, the age of angst, which is which is definitely a certain condition, right? That's a that's a framework of mind that a lot of people stay in, and um, right. and rightfully so, based on our current circumstance. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, I'm also really hopeful in that regard that that this is the kind of crisis that we've really been needing for a long time that pulls us away from individualism and especially as Americans that take such pride in our rugged individualism and makes us concentrate on the health of the people around us. And another thing that I have just become aware of is, is how um, so far the really poor parts of the world have been spared, like Africa, it's kind of amazing to me that there are so few cases in Africa and when it really starts to spread there, it's gonna be real um, Armageddon because they have so few resources when it comes to healthcare. Yeah, and India is another one that 
is really frightening. I mean, they're all, they're admitting 10,000 cases right now, 358 deaths. My friend uh, Seshu this morning uh, told me they're officially locked down to May 3rd, but you know, that's obviously not going to be enough for India. And uh, uh, so Kushbu wants, needs me to send her the link again. Um, so I have to go to that. Um, so uh, Tim, would you take over for a minute while I take care yeah. of Yeah. I just wonder how, how everybody else is feeling about the sort of the, um, the collective meaning of this crisis. How do you feel this is going to affect humanity as a whole and, and our ability to get along with each other and to uh, cooperate when it, comes to, when it comes to major uh, collective crises? Does anybody have thoughts on that? I don't I mean I don't want to take up most of the time that thus far in the meeting, but if if the the Rebel Wisdom channel on YouTube, if you haven't followed them or focused on them, they are they're doing a whole whole lot on collective sense making, and uh, it's very 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 impressive. Um, and, and I think they have some of I mean, the people that they've been presenting offer such a better viewpoint on this than you get from the news media, certainly than you than you get from Twitter or I would what, what I would assume is go. I can't I can't imagine being on Facebook like I've been off Facebook since 2010 and every single day I hear something that I'm just like, Oh, thank God. I'm not on that. Um, but that, that is a platform that's making major discussions on collective sense making and, and in the time of crisis and, you know, just a whole lot and, and, and really, and truthfully, it's not all that complicated. It, it is kind of just this letting go of, this sense of certainty about who you are and what you're supposed to be doing and, and, and not negating the good parts of that understanding yourself and things like that that are positive, but focusing the attention and focusing the, the narrative on the collective. I mean, because I mean, ultimately that's where we all are, right? I mean, that, I mean, at this, at this point, it's kind of, we're all doing that thing and you're what you want or what you hope for or what you even think um, in our current circumstance is not really relevant. <laughs> you know, like, what are you doing? How are you helping people? How are you, how are you doing? If you need to be helping yourself, how are you doing that? Um, that's just, anyway, that, that's something that I really, really do want to encourage people to do is, is follow Rebel Wisdom on YouTube and their whole, their, they have a whole series over it called Collective Sense Making, and a lot of it's, and it's all Corona related and how to deal with it. Well, great, thanks, Gary. Or, um, I mean, great. Um, can can you put up a link for that? Just just put it in the chat. I was going to look for that, but that seems like something that would be a really great resource for people to. Really get a hold of. Yeah, it's great. Uh, hold on, just one second. I don't, I don't mind that at all. Does, does anyone else think that um, going through this? I mean, in my area, I kind of feel like a piranha since I'm now sick. Um, um, but do you think it's going to? cause a pulling back a, a, I mean we have such fear now and when things open up and of course we're being told you know what's going to happen next next flu season next virus season is anyone I, I've thought about this but then I I've been totally alone for so long now but I thought that is there going to be a fear or are people going to be afraid of of being together of, of being 
Well, like they say, don't shake hands anymore. You know, bump, you know, kind of hit and bump elbows. Um, but, and I'm thinking, I, I see this as worldwide. Is there going to be a fear where uh, people just kind of hold back? And I, I kind of wanted to get Gray's feeling on that. And I, i uh, so proud of you, young one, for uh, getting off Facebook. I did that years ago as well because it just, it's just ridiculousness and it it's it's so far from the truth it's if it if it's possible to be worse than the news media and hey i was an army journalist so i can say this if it's possible to be worse than the news media facebook is it so i took myself uh off of facebook a long time ago and a lot of people got real upset with me for doing that but uh but does anyone else think there is going to be a leftover of a, a fear of of and and by that they'll they'll hold back? I guess that's what I'm worried about. Maybe especially those in our age group, since it affected our age group so much. Not you, of course, Gray, or you, Kushbu, uh, you young kids. But some people will struggle with that for sure. I mean, I don't, I don't. I, I and and I'll and I'll say this. I don't think that's an unnatural response. The no, fear. No, it's not. And I, and I, and I think I think that's one thing that I struggle with so much. Even though I do take what probably sounds more of a positive outlook on this, um, but it's not really positivity. It's just mainly for me. It's that I'm not in control, and I, I, I none of us are. Yeah, and I, I think. Um, I think for people, I, I think for people when they get trapped in that fear, they can't operate in that moment, at least not at that point. I, I, I would say, you know, and I think this is something very cool about what we're doing here with the global check-ins is, you know, this does provide an outlet for someone who is in some sense of fear to be able to interact with somebody, you know, at least on some sort of level that that hits some sort of connection, but I, I, I don't. To me, like, you know, I'm I'm um, I'm not going away. For, I, I'm not going away from hugs. You know, I, like I, I'm not. I'm just not. Like, I mean, if you know, and I think I think once, and that's another thing that I pointed out about getting the testing right. I mean, that's uh, it's such a big deal, right? <laughs> that 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 we're able to test and understand. Um, who has what? Not I, I don't really care for that on the national level, but I'm I'm very very hopeful for it on the local level. Um, level. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that I have not been tested, uh, even though they are under the assumption that I did pick it up at the hospital. Uh, but uh, uh, you and I haven't talked before, Gray, but. Uh, I have lupus, so therefore I have no immune system. So there, my doctors are not allowing me to go be tested. I can't go to a clinic. I can't go to a hospital. And that got real scary here a week ago when I stopped breathing. But I couldn't go to a hospital because they said with active lupus that I, I would have no chance at all. They got me on the right medications and I'm you know, here a week later, I'm sitting up and talking. And Cindy, I want to thank you for all your help. And I do hope you're doing all right, dear. I'm, I am hanging in there. Good. I was, I was concerned because I haven't seen you. <laughs> right. I, I couldn't even, for about a week, I couldn't even lift my head off the pillow. So this is my first day. We'll minutes. have to connect offline. Yes, because it was me who wanted to get the herbs because I am such a believer in going the natural way because right now they've got me on so many medications, but they've saved my life. So. Yeah. But it was all done by telephone. I could not go to yeah. get medical help because of my immune system. So I'm really interested in your herbs. And that's what, of course, brings up the fear. But yet it's funny. I don't really have a fear, but people seem to have a fear of me because they know, oh, she's got lupus. She has no immune system. We have, we can't. Well, but that's, a good, that's a good thing though. I mean, that's, that's a good thing that people have that deeper awareness and sensitivity to be cautious 
because you mean, you know, whether, whether you mean something to them, whether they know you personally or they know of you, I think that that's something that this whole epidemic, pandemic, I'm sorry, I'm not awake yet. <laughs> that has, I think that, you know, that that, that has, uh, is one thing amongst many things, I think, are the upsides to this. If we can look for, and I'm a huge believer, and I live my life looking for and finding the uh, silver lining, so to speak. And, you know, when Gray was talking about <coughs> the kinder, the kinder uh, world nation um, that is coming out of this. I mean, I haven't even had my tea yet, so I don't remember if he said if it's already coming out of it. I'm sorry. I'm a little fragmented right now. But um, hopeful. My term is hopeful. I'm hopeful. Hopeful. Hope. I think, yeah, I'm, I, I'm seeing that even right here in my neighborhood, my, my neighbors across the street. Now she's immune compromised. She's had breast cancer, mm -hmm. thyroid cancer. She's had Lyme. We have Lyme together. So we share a lot of info. But when I started, you know, with my symptoms with this, they were bringing me meals. They're checking in with me every day. Um, and we're, I mean, we do that in my neighborhood because I've, I've lived here for, you know, 40 some years and she's kind of a newer transplant in the last seven or eight, but thank goodness <laughs> for new people because, um, she's the sweetest person and most thoughtful person and kind and giving person that I've, I've met. I thought I was, but she is 10 times more than me. And so I, I think that we're, <clears throat> this, this is going to be a huge byproduct out of it. Now, that's not to say that there's going to be, you know, people, I just remember seeing that young kid on the beach in Daytona and it's like, Hey, you know, if I can have a drink or what, I forget what he said, but it was blasted all over the news. There's still going to be people like that. There's still going to be naysayers. There's still going to be people <clears throat> that the narcissism in them is going to, you know, bubble back up and it's going to show its, you know, head again. But I think overall, I think that, you know, the animals outside are, you know, their, their behavior habits have changed. I'm seeing so many dandelions in my yard now. I, I don't like, where did they all come from? <laughs> um, just, there's changes on so, <laughs> on so many levels. And, you know, yesterday, uh, was it yesterday? I, I'm losing track of days. I think, it, yeah, it was yesterday. Skip and I were, were uh, we kind of stayed on talking a little while after one of our meditation sessions. So we were, we were on Zoom, just the two of us. And it was pouring rain outside. And I just, you know, in the last couple of years, going to work, coming home, trying to keep a house, just the busyness of life. Um, I wouldn't have he heard that as much. And I, I ended up, you know, so it was so nice to, to hear the pitter patter of rain and the rumble of thunder. So Skip, I don't know if you heard that where you were at. I mean, there were, there were tornadoes yesterday afternoon, but we ended up with a, a rainstorm. And uh, just to be in tuned with what's outside of me, what's outside of my house without you know, I, I, um, yeah, it's, I, I think that there are some good changes. I think that there's necessary changes, you know, and Gray, when you were talking about, um, I did send you the herbal recipe and you should have it on your email. And thank um, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, Skip. Thank you, Sydney. Cause I really, and because to uh, Deborah asked about that earlier. Uh, this really is the recipe it. that that Cindy recommended, and so for our global audience, I want to share it also on the screen here, uh, just briefly, so that everybody can see it. Um, and uh, 
So if you're watching this in the playback or uh, on YouTube, uh, you will be able to go back to the playback and find uh, this part of this video and replay it for yourself if you want. And also you can ask me, I put my personal email address on the YouTube chat so you can write to me and ask me for this and I'll send it along. Uh, Cindy, would you just uh, tell us quickly what, what your thinking is about this? Uh, sure, sure. Well, I've been on this for uh, five weeks now, five weeks and a couple days. <coughs> and my, uh, I go to an integrative medical practice where they are MDs and PAs and, and NPs, you know, physician assistant, nurse practitioners, and medical doctors, but they are primarily trained in alternative medicine. And so it's, it's a really nice blend. And um, I obtained this protocol or from a uh, herbologist who has been associated in, you know, really rock and foundation amongst other medical providers in the Lyme disease uh, world. And so <coughs> the uh, accompanying, and I, I didn't send that, I have to find it on my laptop, but there's an accompanying uh, 19 page paper that he wrote and it's very long, but it really explains on a, it, it gets down to a very granular level and a very simple level that describes what each uh, herb does, how it attacks and, and or how it works in your body and why the grouping, he made the grouping as he did. Like for instance, the, uh, the, the first section, the core formulation, these are herbs that really address, um, really address the when the virus comes into your body, it attaches to the ACE2 enzyme. We all have ACE2 enzyme and probably the biggest uh, example of that is like when you get a cold, all of a sudden your head will fill with fluid. Well, part of that is that the cold virus, which is a coronavirus as well, uh, that common cold, um, it attaches to the ACE2 enzyme and so some COX-2 inhibitors help to decrease and thwart that attachment. Now that's a medication, that's an over-counter that you can buy at any drugstore or pharmacy or you know, Target, Walmart, Walgreens, whatever. Um, but these are herbals and these herbals do probably a much, much better job at thwarting the early attachment of the viral uh, particles on the ACE2 enzyme on the epithelial cell. Now we have epithelial cells. And I don't want to get real in depth, but we have them throughout our body. And it's our, it's our superficial layer. If you think of your hand, you have epithelial cells on, the in, on your hand surface, on your arm, leg, but also in your nose and in your mouth. That's the outermost layer. And so that's where it attaches. And those herbs and that core formulation <clears throat> help to thwart that. And then when you move into the second one, the immune formulation, these are herbs that are tremendously strong that help to support your immune system. Um, I would suggest for anybody who is, um, you know, I'm not an herbologist. I am not a physician, so I can't prescribe, but I only go by my own personal um, experience. And, you know, even though, you know, I work in a really large hospital that's well known, but I, you know, try to, when I start speaking in this tone, I have to really make a disclaimer that I, nothing I say is to be associated um, with where I work. And so these are from my, all my own experience, but from hundreds of thousands of people that have followed protocols like this and, um, to help treat them and so to help lessen the severity of conditions and so these particular herbs all combine together it's like a three stage three step attack on one preventing um, attachment from the coronavirus two from strengthening your system so that the whole cascade of um like if 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 
if you get bit by a bee, a bee sting, then for people that are sensitive, a whole lot happens. You can either, your throat can swell, you can die. Some people it's lethal. Some people get a big um, uh, area on their skin because lots of fluid comes. So these help to thwart all those pathways. And then the bottom one, the cellular protection is huge because um, the thing with coronavirus is that you have a massive cytokine response, meaning all that fluid comes into your body. And from uh, information that I've seen from friends of mine that are from China and, and uh, Southeast Asia is that, um, you know, the people that succumb to this, they, and, and I, I, I'm sorry to sound so graphic, but their lungs fill up with so much fluid that even a ventilator cannot help. And those are the ones that pass away from it. It's just, you're, you're literally drowning. And so all of these help to thwart that whole pathway from having excess fluid. You know, it sounds simple, but there's many things in the pathway. So, um, so I've been taking all three. I take it um, at a minimum twice a day, if not three to four times a day. Um, my providers have felt that because of the range of symptoms that I've had, that had I not been taking this protocol, even uh, for a week before what was probably my exposure, I, it's hard to know when you're exposed, um, that it's really um, lessened the uh, severity. Now, there's always the chance that I'm not COVID positive. I was actually tested within four hours of shortness of breath. I was at work and I was tested in, within four hours and um, all my flu and other uh, tests came back negative, um, which is, they're not doing that anymore now. They're just giving you just the coronavirus, the COVID test. But a couple of weeks ago, they were testing you for flu A, flu B, RSV, and other types of um, coronaviruses like the cold and you know generally the, the seasonal flus. They all came back negative. So the symptoms I had were very parallel to everything that you would get, the time frame, all of that with the sequela, the meaning the the time frame of this disease. And so I'm interested at some point to there, they want to either retest me or check me for antibodies, but I'm still not ready to leave my, my coughing has, I'm, I'm kind of on a roll right now, I'm talking, but the coughing, I go into spells. I, I still have some, uh, some major GI issues. My SATs were dropping, but my doctors feel that I could have, because of my immune system, um, I'm immune compromised for several reasons. I, Years ago in the 90s, I was on two clinical trials for hepatitis C, and I took interferon for four years. And so that led to other gastric autoimmune diseases. So I have to be careful. And this has helped me tremendously. So what I did was I started low, you start low and slow and you work your way up. So my, when I when I created mine, I, I put it in a cup of water and uh, I can actually show you a little bit of what I have. Um, and you have part, the word part, P-A-R-T or parts. What measurement are you speaking of? Well, this is a measurement that I came up with. Okay, this is just, for example, one. This is, this is in the core formulation. Um, I have a couple others in my bag. Um, my part is, and I just decided this because I helped somebody some years back when they had shingles and the shingles went away in three days. My part is I take it and I, uh, it's like one, two, three, four. I count out, um, when I first started, it was seven drops. I've worked my way up to about 12 drops and that's one part. Um, when I come to something that has a capsule, my part is half a cap. And so I've got all these bags of half capsules in here. Um, and that's how I do it. So now when I take one part of something, it's about 12 drops. And when I take a capsule, it's a little bit uh, more than half. 
of a capsule. So I've graduated my way up. And this particular one, I couldn't find it in a dropper and I couldn't find it in a capsule. I found it in a powder. So I just looked at the milligram dosage on it and looked at a comparative capsule. And so it's about a uh, quarter to a half, uh, eighth to a quarter teaspoon is a part when I have a loose powder. So, so that's how I've done it. And as long as your, your, um, your parts stay the same each time you do it, like if, you, if your part is seven drops to start, make everything seven drops. Now there's something where it has two parts, so that would be 14 drops. So that's how I did it. Um, because I didn't have all liquids. If you have all liquids, then you can, um, the, uh, you can mix it all together and it's a little bit easier. But I had liquids, I had the droppers, and I had capsules and I had powder. And um, so that's how I kind of came to making everything equivalent, so. And it doesn't taste bad, it, you know, it's, when I put the cordyceps in there, it kind of clumps up, I mix it up really good. I kind of put it with slightly warm water and uh, I drink it down. It's in about three ounces, four ounces of water. It looks awful. Um, I've had other Tibetan medicine that is, oh my gosh, it's horrific tasting. This is not bad by the time I mix it all together, so. Uh, has your, um... <coughs> Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you're like me, you're communicating with it, with your doctor, your specialist by phone, which is what I'm doing. Um, have they told you since you do have the well, limes and other things that since you're autoimmune uh, compromised, they're telling me that they are going to test me after the fact, mm -hmm. uh, as soon as it's safe for me to, to go somewhere to have blood testing done. But they're telling me that I having lupus is a, such a strong attack right now that I probably will not build up antibodies. And I know that's true. Um, I don't build up antibodies like other people do. Are they telling you that as well, Cindy? No, I haven't heard that. I mean, they are, you know, interested to, to test me for antibodies. Work, on the other hand, is very interested to have me retested because then I can go back to work. Um, and so, um, but I haven't heard. Now, I know that I don't see an immunologist. That's one doctor that I don't see. Uh, so that might be the kind of message that that immunologist would say, but one of the um, providers in my little toolkit was a hematologist oncologist because my immune system, I ended up developing uh, intestinal metaplasia, which is gastritis one stage before cancer. And so I've been doing everything I can over the last five years to thwart that. And so there's other things I take, um, but if somebody doesn't you know, take this whole protocol and maybe you have heard about uh, quercetin in the past, that's something I take every day. Um, it's uh, let me let me get it real quick, and I don't want to uh, go too far into this, but that is something that anybody it helps prevent cancer. It helps prevent the cascade that occurs in your body of uh, oncogenesis, meaning the genesis of cancer. It helps to prevent it. So, for many people that have had cancer. Um, if you have a provider that is um, that is more um, uh, in tune with what what natural supplements um, can do, because not all providers believe in that. Many are just strictly Western medicine, um, and so it's it's used a lot in the uh, treatment of you know for recurrence of cancer. How do you spell that, Cindy? It's Q U E Q U E R C E T I N. Thank you. Yes. Thank I'd also so like to just uh, put in a word I think Jerome would do if he were here. Here it that is. Those of, that those of us uh, with extreme allergies need to be careful. Yeah. Uh, 
when we try things like this. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you, you, with any herbs, you always want, because these are natural, you always want to start slow, <coughs> low and slow, meaning a very low dose and work your way up, you know, over the course of a couple weeks and be very mindful. Now, many of these I have taken in the past, but even with these, I started out extremely low. And, and, and to be, to be, uh, to go backwards, I did, I did number one, the core formulation. I did that on its own, very low and slow for the first four or five days, just to make sure that I'm okay with these. Cause these, there's a couple in there that I've never taken. And so I had no symptoms or anything. I didn't, you know, feel like it upset my stomach or anything like that. And so then I added the, the second one, the number two, which is the immune um, piece. And then I added that in. And then finally, around day nine or so, I added the third part in. So I added those very slowly. But they're all natural. They're, they're not formulations made, you know, in, in, from the pharmaceutical company. These are um, Japanese knotweed has been used for thousands of years for a variety of things. I'd never heard of it. So I was very cautious when I tried it, but um, I've had, I mean, I, I could say, I don't even know I'm taking them because I don't feel anything. So always low and slow, just graduate your way up. And even with the quercetin, um, I take this every day. This is my anti-cancer formulation. And there's a few things that, you know, somebody can take to help interfere with that. So I'm going to make a short video just of this part that I'll also be putting up. I mean, this, this part of what was talked about um, will be in the, in the playback of this video, but it's kind of hidden in the middle. So I want to, I'll pull out this piece because I think uh, what you've been talking about here is quite important. And um, I know that um, Gray is is uh, working and trying to <laughs> keep keep uh, working as a teacher. So I, I just wanted to speak to Gray about uh, one thing, just to be sure we catch it before he has to leave us. Uh, Gray, um, recently I heard that I had a I heard a report about rural hospitals. Um, and uh, they had a doctor on who said she was doing 24 hour shifts because of coronavirus. And she said her hospital does, doesn't even have a single um, ventilator, not a single one. And I know that there are about 8,500, or I'm sorry, there are about 1,100 um, rural hospitals or small hospitals in the country um, that have fewer than 25 beds. And I assume that most of them are probably in the same boat. And so I was wondering if, uh, because you're in a more rural part of Georgia, whether you've heard anything about how they're faring right now. It's a, uh, so we've mentioned Albany, Georgia on, on here a couple of times. Um, it's kind of, it's one of the more famous places now in the, in the Corona world because um, there were two local funerals that occurred in late February where pretty much the whole town was gathered, you know, kind wow. of as we were, as we were going. And this is a town of Albany. Albany, I believe is about 30, 40,000 people. Um, Southwest, portion of the state and that's just a very that's a very desolate part of Georgia it's incredible farmland very good farmland but you know just not a lot of population density well I know now that uh, there's a town called Rome Georgia which is about 70 miles northwest of Atlanta that is you know kind of now part of I mean, 70 miles from Atlanta is part of Atlanta at this point and um, but their private high school their private hospital is turning their parking garage into beds for the patients of Albany. 
um, mm. because they don't have um, they don't have what it is that they're going to need, and they're not you know. And I I will say this about I, I do think that this is the one of one of the major positives of the way the federal government has handled this is the depletion and the not having the the respirators in the national stockpile. Um, they're sending them directly to places in real time, such are they're supposed to be, um, based on what the state needs. And that, that, that's the hope, but it's not, there is no way to keep up with that in real time, right? I mean, there's no, there, uh, you know, if you are a hospital in Albany, Georgia, or God forbid, outside of Albany, Georgia, maybe a town like Blackshear, Georgia, which has, you know, less than 800 people, you know, what happens when that person gets there? Because I mean, I mean, I think uh, Cynthia said this. I think uh, um, I think a lot of people have come up and said this. It's like when you get it, like one of the I mean, going out is is you know it might not be the move, right? I mean, it. it, it but the, I don't know. To get them to the hospital is is going to be difficult. To get them transported is going to be difficult. Um, so yeah, I, I think in the rural towns, in the most rural towns and in the most rural places, there's gonna be a very, very big split differentiation between the people who, because isolation is easy, right? It's, it's easier to isolate in a rural area. So there's gonna be positive there where I think we're experiencing that in Macon, right? Um, but in the most rural areas, you get one social gathering and it's, I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, and the whole, the whole place has it and, um, and then you're overrun. And so that, that, that whole narrative is going to be, um, that's going to play out in a very different circumstance than how it has played out in the cities. Whereas in the cities, you know, you, everybody's kind of, or not everybody, but a lot of people went into their isolation units and, and then, you know, you, you, you get the normal percentages, but in rural areas, I mean, I, I think you're going to see a whole lot more of a split differentiation statistically where, you know, uh, a large, a large percentage gets it and is, is bad sick. And then the other half is, is, is fine. You know, I mean, I, I think, and, and I'm not half as that came out wrong, but I, I think you'll see, a, I think you'll see a difference in percentage. The other big concern that I have for rural areas is rural areas generally see an increase in smoking and tobacco products. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the, I, you know, and I don't, I don't know, I, I haven't heard anything about this, um, but uh, the the meth and the opioid crisis on top of that just horrifies me. I mean, it just, it's horrifying to, because those places in the pot, in poverty stricken rural areas, there's generally a massive connection between people who do and make meth. Um, and especially, I mean, I, I, I and, and then I don't think it's especially in the South. I think that's everywhere now. Um, and then opioids, I mean, how, how uh, the negative of that is is horrifying. It really, really is. Um, so, I mean, I, I I do think I do think again, there's positives in being in a rural area. Um, the issue is you just you can't keep up with it in real time. If one person went to the city and got it, you know, um, and has it, it's it's there. And yeah, it's that's the as you're talking about that, um, you know, my, the, the thoughts that came to me is that for some very, very, very small towns. Now, where I live now is right in between Baltimore and DC. And so I see Skip and Annapolis. So that makes a perfect triangle where I'm right in the middle. And it's very populated, this whole, you know, we call it the DMV area. Uh, um, the district, Maryland and Virginia, it's very populated. But when you think of some small rural towns where there's just a couple thousand people and they're scattered, yeah, one large, uh, for them, <coughs> large get together can 
can decimate a whole town. And, uh, and they don't have, I, that's one of the things that's coming up a lot is that they don't have the resources available and how to get the resources out there. Um, you know, and that's, that's the one underlying um, thought behind this whole thing of flattening the curve, not just uh, trying to um, thwart the, the uh, spread of the contagion, but to be able to access healthcare. Um, you know, if everybody's needing uh, healthcare, being an emergency ICU bed and then a ventilator all at the same time. Um, and so, but once we come down from the curve, it's gonna be very important for people to still maintain um, their sense of, you know, extreme caution. This virus doesn't go away just because we're coming down from the apex. It does, it's not like, oh, okay, it's all right to go out now. It just means, what it really means is that not everybody's gone to the hospital at the same time. Maybe there's not as many people in the waiting room. Um, that's what coming down from that apex means. Yes, it means that it's not, um, there's not as maybe the transmission rate. I mean, you can get to a point where um, in any population there's saturation, but you know, we have, I, I don't know the, the current number of people in this country and um, it would take a long time to thoroughly fully saturate all populations in all countries. I mean, that just, that's not something that we even wanna think about as a potential, but um, if we think that once we get, you know, on top of this apex and, and begin to see that um, things are flattening out and we're on the way down that, okay, life is gonna come back to normal. Um, it's not, that's, it's, it's, that's, that scares me. That, that really scares me so much. So, and I, I actually work in substance abuse, um, you know, currently, <coughs> and it is, it's, it's been a real um, eye opener for providers in this area because, you know, there's, there's uh, even for the people that are getting treatment, um, to try and comply with the recommendations of social distancing and still maintaining access to healthcare. Even in that arena, um, many people, and I'm sure this is the same across this country and other countries where they have people on medication assisted treatment that they're getting larger amounts of it to come home with for their daily dose because of the social distancing and you know the the maintaining stay at home and so yeah that that's a huge huge concern the mental health i mean there's there's a lot of areas that that we think of in in healthcare whether it's our physical or our mental health that all these are impacted and so um i think that you know talking about it is good I think that this channel is good because for the people that may stumble on this channel for no other reasons of boredom or they stumble upon it and they hear something that resonates with them, um, I think that, that it will help those people. And I think that's our goal is to be able to reach out and, and, and help each other, help our, our neighbor or people we don't know. So, um, so, uh, Cindy, let me uh, interject that and give Kushbu a chance uh, because we haven't heard from India. Uh, I'm not sure she's awake. Oh, there she is. <laughs> she, it looked like she was Hi. in meditation there. I guess that was a picture you had on there. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know what was the picture. I really don't know. But, yeah, I, I am so... And is it my update time? I'm sorry, what was the question? Uh, should I have to update like now? Like, yeah, is it please, my time? Yeah, please give us an update on what you're seeing in India. And um, I'm hoping some of my other Indian colleagues will come on, but uh, I, I hope you listen to the Easter 
recording that we did because uh, about an hour and 10 minutes in that, I uh, told a story about my four Hindu uh, partners who went to a Easter service of my, with me in, um, uh, at the Naval Academy Chapel. And I, I really would like for you to hear that particular part of that video, if you will. Sure. Okay, but any, anyway, go ahead, please, sure, sure. please tell us what's going on um, and what, what you're seeing. So, um, so just now, like I, I went offline because I got another call. Uh, and so we are, so something was just on top of my head that there is all the, like the only thing teenager, teenage kids around here had was that the small corner places where they hang out. Um, and there, their uh, their parents parents are basically like like laborers but these kids are like first generation who are literate kind of so and they live in a very small confined place where it's one bedroom where kitchen is also inside and there are four or five, five people so so they're like they're free this like for them freedom really means something like so, so they are, it is like, how, how do I, I feel it is like they are, we are making them angry. We are making them, they're going to be very angry with this situation. Like, I've, so, so I was thinking if we can, we can, bar, like we can uh, arrange, I just off of my head, I asked somebody that if it is possible to, if, if can you ask in your apartment, if people have some games. Uh, some board games which we can give it to them so at least they will have some fun time with their friends so um, and it, it has just become like a movement so I'm just getting calls by calls for calls throughout so I'm like okay if God wants me to do this I will do this <laughs> but it is quite comforting in that way because I really see how uh, the these kids, their in their parents are not able to meet their intellectual capacity. Their parents are not able to meet their uh, like economical requirements, and now they are physically constrained on top of it. <clears throat> so, so for these kids, it's like a hell time. So I let's let's see. So I'm I'm trying to arrange games, <laughs> which we can give give it to the kids in the neighborhood area. Yeah. That ha yeah. that has to help. I'm sure every every little bit helps. There's no doubt. But yeah, it so, sounds like you're doing really good work. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. So that is that is that has been keeping me busy. Today is the our uh, lockdown has been ex. Send it till the third of next month, which I am not, which which is good. So our uh, uh, the 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 rate, so the lockdown like as per the government data, the lockdown helped, and what expected number which we were supposed to get, uh, it is twenty five percent lesser. So. Um, the, the 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 new cases which has which have come out so that is something interesting but the the, the bigger challenge india so lockdown is lockdown is good but there is no way any financial help that can be sent to anybody like without making physical contact because they have no bank accounts even if somebody wants to send them money. So, so it's like we, yeah, the, so in India, there is uh, the communication channel, like sedition, <laughs> lot of people are being uh, like young activists. They are 
using sedition act and they are putting them in the jail that has started from yesterday and uh, can you say that again? are not kush but what is what's happening sedition se, se, sedition charges sedition charges am i pronouncing it right yes Sed sedition is uh, uh, is banned yeah. in the united is i mean the acts of putting down sedition per se is banned in the u.s because we used to have alien and sedition acts which would prevent people from talking about their situation and uh so the it, it gives the government power to just arrest people if they don't like what they're saying yes and and, um, and theoretically at least we don't have sedition acts in the united states but it, it's quite clear from what kush is saying that they do have in india so uh, go ahead kush sorry thank you one second, one second. Yeah. Yoda. Okay. I, I, I'm sorry. I have to run, run over there and then. Anyway, so just, just I, I've gotten used to of it. Please, you guys live a little bit of my life here. <laughs> yeah. So, well, thank so you for sharing that. Yeah. Kushbu Yoda is the dog herd around the world. <laughs> yeah. I I one second I have to go. Yeah. Yodu, please don't do this. Yeah, go ahead. Um, um, <laughs> Tim, um, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, I just wanted to thank her for the story. It's just so interesting yeah. to hear what's happening yeah. there. I'm I'm really worried about. India, yeah, and me too. The the kinds of issues she's talking about are are really critical, and you know the. Krishna, I was just saying, I really appreciate what you're what you're doing there, because India is so vulnerable in this in this situation, and. There are so, so many people, especially children, that don't have resources. And I think we're just going to see a huge um, catastrophe unfold there. So um, my heart goes out to you. You're doing really good work. Thank you. <clears throat> Absolutely. Thank, thank you for saying that. And, and actually, thank you for understanding it. Because the... The challenge here is that that we are we are not looking deeper into that's exactly a problem with, with the entire implementation of the lockdown which has happened in India. That they on paper it is it is actually the way it is supposed to be. But then for an example, if you have if you have a Sidzu dog, a very small dog, then you will give different treatment. If you have a German shepherd, then you will need a different kind of a setup. It's so you so it's it's like that they they did, did not take care of it's like it's a it's a dog but all dogs are not same it's it's so 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 they have done they have done the way it is supposed to be but they forgot the the essence of like the individual characteristic of it and that is that is that has been like totally ignored which is worrisome for me because. I'll tell you, like, like this is the personal. So the, I told you the external thing. I, I I want to share like in. So in in late uh, uh, early January, I observed. Um, I observed like a very discrimination with uh, discrimination at uh, at my workplace. And uh, uh, I was I I went to inspect inspect that's one organization and they said so the one lady who was a nurse in that community clinic did not come 
out in the reception to sit with everybody everybody of uh, everybody uh, the staff of that organization and when i insisted she came and sat on the floor i'm like why are you sitting on the floor come on you are the nurse you are the most respected person here and all that thing like i'm all charged up i was so happy to see her working there and things like that and she said no all the men are sitting on the chair how can i sit on the on here you are from city so you can sit on the chair but i should sit on the floor i'm like kill me god kill me why i am exposed to this situation like it was <laughs> and be and it was me so i had to speak i'm like so i i took to all the way to all the authority that we have to enlighten her and enlighten everybody that we sit together but i was fired because of that Mm. and um, <laughs> so i wish i, I could tell you how many times i wish i could tell you how many times that happened to me too so it's uh, we we gain wisdom <laughs> now <that way>. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh kishpu you are so... a very very strong woman i am so impressed with you You're so young and so strong. I'm very impressed with you. Please keep it up. Don't let them change you. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah, there's a, Thank you so much. There's an old uh, so, Latin saying which is illegitimate no non non carborundum. Illegitimate non carborundum, which means don't let the bastards grind you down <laughs> thank you i have like small story associated with this so i wrote a long email and i i sent that to my boss about explaining all of this and before that i sent that email to my three friends to you know just check this and like you know i don't want to do a drama just just calm me down if i am overwriting and things like that and one of my friend came like responded me using that like saying that that if i have a company and you are my employee you will be the ceo tomorrow morning okay <laughs> and another so when i i shared that email with with the with the boss you know what one thing only one thing i remember he said who who, who cares who Ka, who carl young is everything went blind i smiled in my head i'm like i understand i understand you don't care i understand you don't care you know he said this sentence and i don't remember anything for 15 20 minutes he spoke to me after this <laughs> like judgment was given <laughs> he doesn't care yet yeah so you you have also have fans yeah. on the YouTube, on the youtube chat i'm i'm seeing uh people uh, talk about how impressed they are of you uh kushbu on the youtube chat right now so uh so just hang oh. in there and i don't remember anything thank you yeah You have to remember that saying illegitimate no non corporundum means uh, don't let the I'm best to write try. It, yeah. yeah I put it in the chat um don't let the best So anyway that that that's like that that is what happening I was I had I had three interviews lined up and that is not happening now So I have enough savings which we which would keep me going for next two months but my over confidence is wearing off now because i have to like help so many people and and it it is like i have to choose now that do i really care for others or do i worry for my future and that is the constant choice i i'm like like i have to make every day so so somebody was was today 
like desperately asking for work in the grocery store where i went and he just took that broomstick and he just started cleaning and he was like no no you give me money everybody's like no you go so i was every i just sat quietly like i was looking at all of that and then i just gave that that man little money and i'm like just go home now and wear mask no go home wear mask you know i don't understand the local even even language here mm-hmm. and then everybody like everybody around me started telling me that madam don't do this now he will come tomorrow also to ask work i'm like okay fine i'll mind and now i will go, go and check on him tomorrow like i will have to and so so i, I am constantly in this i have been what introduced to or subjected to all this godly phenomena <laughs> yeah Yeah. So, yeah. Well, um, that Thank you for your story. Yeah, that conflict of duties is where the rubber meets the road in terms of um, morality and and your moral situation. So, um, so I recognize that it's one of the toughest parts of life. It's something that Dr. Young spoke about often the conflict of duties and uh it's it's very difficult yeah. but that's uh you know what doesn't kill us makes us stronger so um it's all the more important that all of us <laughs> stay alive survive <laughs> survive yeah. and yeah. Uh, right I'm sorry. So, so and it, I will I will I I just want to emphasize on what Gray was uh, speaking earlier. Uh so if you if you really want to like like get deep in, into things in the present situation and very especially if you want to understand it from the formula of patterns like how the patterns are emerging Yeah. and how the the and the different perceptions about it the people who speak in that channel rebel wisdom uh, they have a wonderful vocabulary of the modern generation so so i, I will highly recommend uh, take a look at it it will it is actually very calming information like for me it is calming information we all should know Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Where time permits I will do. I I'm finding myself very filled up with things to do these days. Good uh, for you. Good skip. for you. <laughs> Kushpu mentioned this and I think it's popped up once or twice in in our conversation and that's just something I would like I I'd kind of like to get Cynthia's op- opinion on being and and I think Nancy's as well. And it's to what what the collective kind of what the psyche is doing to get the people together that need to be discussed i know i know earlier with deborah we talked about and and i think Cynthia as well different types of of kids or younger people that weren't engaging kind of the way that that maybe we want them to but the psyche is still providing it seems like ways for the people who are looking for the same things to make these connections in in a, in a different way you know i i i um i that i don't know i just that what what is it in this collective movement that's getting the people to have conversations like we're having where we obviously do want to be experiencing some sort of connectedness beyond what's available to us in our daily lives i mean it, it's 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 obvious that no, it's not i don't know that it's obvious it seems like we're drawn to each other it seems like again it, it there's just this and it and it doesn't have the same familial it, it tendencies that some of our earlier family structures have provided i just I, it's it's been uh somebody when, when i think Deborah, i think um 
think it was well, trying to remember who was actually, I think it was Deborah was talking about when she was talking about kids and grandkids not responding. I, I thought about, um, I thought about the time in scripture where Christ was being kind of talked to by his family members and, and uh, about speaking to crowds and you know, his response in, in his response were look at the people, the people, that's my mother, you know, that's my brother and sister. The, those people are my family now. I mean, is it, 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 you know, as, as the psyche drives us to this thing, I mean, do you think that's something that we'll see is, is kind of a sense of collective that, that moves beyond the former family unit in some way? Like, I, I don't know. That's just, that was, that was toying around in my head while and Kushbu, Kushbu, listening to Kushbu made me think of it as well, because I mean, here we are in, you know, Penelope was in London, Kushbu's in India, we're, in, we're just, we're all spread out, but here we are, you know, however many people searching and dealing with the same thing um, and doing it in the same way. It was when she was talking about, you know, her, Jung not being important, here we all are not talking about Jung, but Jung being important to connect the people who are on this call i don't know that's just that's what was going on in my mind yeah i i'm i'm gonna withhold my response especially since you asked nancy and cindy to respond first so uh i'll i'll save mine for last so uh cindy do you want to address that i i want to add something here little so 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 I, I actually wrote, wrote a poem uh, uh, y yesterday, which which ends uh, with with the line that Vasudev Kutumbakam. It's a concept. It's like a family of God. So, and family of gods. It means that like human family. So Vasudev Kutumbakam. It's a it it means that a human family like of entire world. And uh, uh, so, so I think I think what Gray is saying is, is like it's really resonating with me that that this this family, this Vasudev Kutumbakam, is are we poking at each other? Like, are we are we looking at each other? Like, finally, because because how how much it matters if 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 somebody is sitting like thousands of kilometers away from me and I am in deep love and blah 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 and caring about so, that person so much but I don't know about like like fourth house from my home like you know I don't know about that person so like when we will start saying that that's wrong that's wrong you gotta do that that is okay. You can love everybody, but that the neighbor is your responsibility. Like, so, so I, is this? Is it that time? Finally, we are there. Because if you don't take care of them, it is gonna affect you. So be selfish and do it. But we must do it. But, but so. finally, we are dealing with our neighbors because we're all neighbors in the whole world. And correct and. Mm -hmm and we are the neighbors in your house <laughs> right now <laughs> we're, not four, we're not four cal we're, we're not four kilometers away we're, we're a foot and a half from your nose <laughs> so you also have to Get think it. about that and we care very much about you there's yeah. no doubt yeah we yeah, are and a family right now we are a family indeed we are and like I am, I'm choosing family as, as, as like, I am choosing to take you guys for granted. Like what I mean to say is that I can lock my dogs in the other room, but I'm like, it is going to be two and a half hours. They might bark for like 30 seconds when I am talking. So they all will adjust. We all will adjust. So I just, I, I just took it for granted. Right? And yeah, just letting you no thank you <laughs> i feel it i feel it all the love <laughs> yes <laughs> thank you yeah definitely 
<laughs> That's really beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we are a family and um, we're here for each other. We're, we're here for who comes and has found, you know, some things that we've said that resonates with them and they come back and, and look at this channel again. But for those, those of us that are on here, I know I, I haven't been on here very long, but I'm on here every day now. <laughs> and um, I look forward to it. I, you know, I, when you think of, when you think of family, family is not, not just your biological family or not a, a family that um, is legally yours. Um, I have family that um, I didn't know for many years, but when I met them, I knew that they were family to me. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that when, when Gray was talking about, you know, to try to answer Gray's question a little bit, and I, I don't know if I'm going to get, um, or if I'm going to give, uh, an on topic answer. Um, I'm hoping so, but I think that that uh, one way that people <coughs> are getting together prior to this was through social media. I mean, if we, you know, it doesn't, we can look back, you know, prior to 50 years ago, um, although sometimes I get caught thinking, you know, have we been here before? And, you know, will we reach this again? Um, but th that's some of my own beliefs about eternity. But, um, you know, when you think of the, um, the pandemics that have occurred, you know, 100 years ago and 200 years ago, there's, there seems to have been a significant pandemic that's occurred about every 100 years. And I've only gone back four, five, 600 years. Um, we didn't have radio. We didn't have television. Of course, we didn't have the internet. And so I think, well, how did, how did they know how many, you know, people were, <coughs> were impacted? Um, but how did people at that time know? And did they, they obviously didn't have the opportunity that we have now to be aware of what's going on, not just in our, our nuclear family at home, but around the world, to our families around the world, to our families on social media, um, to our families that we go to visit physically when we travel. People never had that opportunity. And so, I think that if you look at, you know, recurring pandemics, not so much the same um, disease or pathogen, but just the fact that these things happen, that we're in a unique situation to be able to understand and to reach out. And, you know, I think that this is a, such a um, pivotal time in our humanity. And um, on a granular level, on a personal level, you know, there can be difficulties, there can be joy. Um, I mean, I spent <coughs> two and a half hours on the phone the other night um, with um, my goddaughter and who's really like my daughter. She is my daughter. I helped, you know, distantly raise her and um, she lost her mother and still has her father. But so I'm her mother now, her real mother now in that sense, but, um, you know, we just, we, we have, we have technology that allows us to be able to do that, but only, it, it only depends on what's in our heart and how we use that technology to better help people and to reach out. And, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll see positive. I, I truly believe that when we get to the far side of this, um, that we're going to be kinder and more compassionate to each other as people, to animals. I'm just enjoying seeing just different behaviors in animals that I don't, I mean, I actually, I looked out my window yesterday and, you know, I've been throwing out some of my, uh, my kitchen waste, you know, like when I'm cutting carrots up or something that are raw. I'm just throwing it out in my, in my backyard. And 
different things like walnuts and seeds for the birds. I have birds nesting in um, an overpass where I go out the door, an awning. But I, I looked out my window and I saw all these birds that kind of came down into my yard to, I guess, look for worms because it was rainy yesterday morning. And I've, I saw something I've never seen before and the birds were laid out like this on their bellies, on the grass. And I thought, oh my gosh, I have like two or three dead birds in my yard. But then I saw their heads looking around and they were just like sunning themselves. I'm like, I've never seen that before. I tried to get a picture and I'm, I couldn't go outside because then I would have frightened them. So I'm trying to take a picture through my blinds and it didn't come out very well, but it was just so joyous to see that. And it's like, it's happening. It's happening where we don't see it, where we don't pay attention. But I think that, I hope that people are at some point that are not in tune to these kind of things can feel the frequency, that they can feel the vibrations in the world happening right now. They can help lift people up, that can help those kids, those teenage kids at the corner where, you know, maybe the little corner store is closed down because nobody's going to work and there's no more deliveries, that they'll have things to do, maybe not games to play, but things to talk about, to find inspiration. And my prayer is that inspiration can be felt by everybody. Um, I am hope so. I, I'm very hopeful. So I don't know if that answers your question. But uh, I, I was hopeful for that. Skip will, Skip will tell you, if I ask a question, I just want you to ramble for a, for a while <laughs> and say what's on your mind. And, and then we'll take from there, we'll take the truth from it. You know, we'll, we'll grow. So very, that's, that's, that's what I was hopeful for. Nancy, you were, you, know, you were asked to give your thoughts on this also. So. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm to. trying to, I'm trying to come up with something and four or five things pop into my mind and then I can't think of anything. But um, this young man that is renting a room from me is taking this um, virus thing very casually. And when we had a little talk, it was because he doesn't expect to suffer from it in any significant way. And so we run, we lock horns a bit on my trying to have him be careful. Last night he had a pizza delivered and he said, I'll wipe it down in my room when I get to my room. So I, I don't know how to handle these things, but I certainly see a different attitude uh, in this 28 year old than in myself. Um, before we had the shutdown here in Reno, the day before he and I went for a ride just to see the high places and look out over the valley in several different places. And uh, in one place, we got out of the car trying to maintain a dis proper distance and a man came along with his dog and out of me burst the words, hello, Mr. Human Being. You know, I was just thrilled to see another human being. And he got this big smile on his face. Uh, so for me, it's like a, a mixed thing. I'm concerned about my own health and safety. At the same time, I'm delighted to see other eyes and faces and hear a voice or see a smile of just another human being. One thing I did discover about myself that uh, I am working to remedy though, is that uh, in identifying and caring about, um, you know, all the people that are going through this, like the healthcare workers, the grocery store clerks, those who are ill and dying, those who are family losing people, uh, part of letting in all that sorrow into me, which was not good, was that there was a sense of guilt in me that I was not suffering in the same way that they were. 
And so I've had to recognize that in myself and let God be God and not me be God. <laughs> That's great, Nancy. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. I think both of those, both of those, both of those answered my, I mean, it just the, the, the dynamics, the, the signposts have fallen to, I guess, to quote yeah. Jung and, and to, to give arts, especially a, a shout out because that's in the way that it's to come, at least in the red book. Can yeah, I, I, can I, it's been, it's been awesome. That was all, both, both of you. Thank you so much. Go ahead. So. I'm sorry. And I, I apologize. I was cutting you off. Um, I just wanted to just make a comment about what Nancy said. Um, one thing that's helped me over the years, because I, I have a, a huge tendency to, to um, absorb um, other people's emotions. And uh, <clears throat> so that can be very, um, very uh, heavy for you. But uh, something I, I learned somewhere along the line years ago. And I, uh, I have found that when people are experience, experiencing situations or talking about it, um, the value of just, just listening. For me, it's always been hard because as a nurse, I wanna like help and give and, and, and I don't always have, you know, go to have been more beneficial, but um, I see the value now and it's value for the person I'm listening to, and it's valuable for me, so. Well, we, uh, Tim and I started this process uh, back, back I don't know, just two weeks ago or whatever it was, three weeks ago now, perhaps. Um, and, and so Tim, I, I'd like to ask you to talk about how it's, serving you and and uh, what you think we're uh, accomplishing here. Well, it's, I, I really concur with what, what we've been talking about that this becomes a sort of family. I see you guys um, every few days where I only see my sister now, maybe once a month, although she lives very close and um, works not very far away. So this, this contact becomes really important. Um, reflecting on what Nancy said about seeing this guy when they were out driving around there was a fellow that came to deliver a, a package a few days ago and I almost invited him in for a coffee just because I wanted to see another human being. <laughs> it's just very, very remarkable to see people in the flesh anymore, which is really sad. Um, we are such social creatures. We are like bees and I feel like I'm a bee in a hive that is separated from all the other bees. And it's just not, um, it's not natural and it's, I don't think it's healthy. And I, I really hope that one of the things we can figure out is how to, to have contact without um, endangering each other. So that's, I'm looking forward to that. But I think the, I think the value of this group is, is the emotional exchange, sharing stories and fears and worries and support. I think that's so important and it's important all the time, but particularly in this time when the world is gonna be turned upside down and things will never be the same again. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure we will build big public spaces anymore, like stadiums. I'm not sure that, uh, that we will 
have a sense of safety in, in big groups. It seems like the shock of this contagion is going to stay with us in our psyches forever after. And maybe in a hundred years time, that will have faded to some degree, but certainly for the, for the decades to come, it's gonna have a major impact. And the, the thing that we need to do most dramatically, I think, is to figure out how to stay connected with each other because our relationships are the most important thing we have other than you know your own relationship with the divine human relationships are what keeps us civilized that's what civilization is and there is nothing more important than relationships i think this is one of the things that has suffered greatly with modern civilization that we get so fixated on our scientific ability and our wealth and our we're so impressed with our own status and popularity that we lose track of the fact that it's the other people that give give our lives meaning mm -hmm. so i just thank you all for being able to share yourselves and to participate in this process. It's so meaningful. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Um, Thank you for your ideas. This was a yeah. great idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I wanted to go back and uh, just end this session today on a bit of a Jungian note and uh, and talk about what I think is happening in um, our psyches. Uh, Dr. Jung knew throughout his lifetime that we were on the cusp of a new stage of consciousness. And I think that uh, what is happening now is, um, you know, a manifestation of that. We're seeing that people are changing right before our eyes. Um, and, uh, and, and not to talk about that so much, but, you know, one of the things that I've observed over time is that, um, you know, Friedrich Nietzsche said, God is dead. Well, the God of rationalism is dead. Um, and materialism, that God is dead, that there was never a God of materialism who was alive, actually. <laughs> but but uh, what I've often said is that um, Nietzsche proclaimed that God is dead, and what Jung did was he came back in the next generation and said not only that God is alive, but uh, where he lives and how he goes about doing the work of the Godhead. And they, you know, it's said that uh, God works in mysterious ways and, the, you know, what's happening now, all of it um, is an example of that uh, par excellence. And, um, and I, you know, when I, when I want to be kind of a little facetious, uh, interestingly, though, I've, I've set, made this statement, God is alive. Dr. Jung said where he lives and how he goes about doing the work of the Godhead. I think only one time has anybody even asked me what the, what that third point is, um, you know, which is how God goes about doing the work of the Godhead. And, um, and when I want to be facetious, I say, well, it's like bumper cars in the, in the amusement park where, where um, we just keep crashing into one another and we gain more and more consciousness and, and 
awareness of what's happening to us and 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 so um you know god most certainly is there but god is um is a part of all of us and as we crash together uh in one way or another both in love and in enmity um god learns and and uh improves and uh and points points the way for us and um so i, I just stop on that point for now i don't want to go on about it but uh, so any comments on that yeah that that's really beautiful and, and meaningful and, and speaks to to all of us i by listening to you i also wanted to respond to nancy and, and they kind of both together um and to all of us here our family here today uh Nancy, you brought up about the younger people, and of course, so did uh, uh, Kishbu, and, and well, and myself and Cindy with, with, with our grandchildren and children. Um, I think uh, there is a fear, and now, of course, Gray is much younger than the rest of us, but I think there is um, Kishbu's, but I think there is a fear that the younger people, like Nancy's 28 year old daughter, who are not taking it serious. And we, as the elders, and I know Skip talked about this when he and Tim were first putting this group together, talking about, you know, the indigenous tribes who had the elder wise men, wise women, shamans. And, and that's what Nancy was saying as, as well, and Skip as well. In fact, we've all said it. We, we have to go forth, uh, whether it be on video or whether it be make a phone call or send an email or whatever it takes, we need to help our youth as, as Kishbu is doing, as Cindy is doing, as, as, uh, as Nancy's kind of reeling a little bit about because he's a boarder and she wants, I, I, I can tell what she's feeling. She, she's like a son and, but he's not listening. And we, and, and, Greg, you're younger, you're, but you're still, we, you're a teacher. We need to get the children to listen. I think that's the biggest thing that's come out of today. Uh, that and the fact that we are a family. And, and also, I just want to say to those of us who are here today, since it's a small group, uh, if it had not been for Nancy and Skip, and especially Cindy, I would never have realized that I was sick. And if that had not happened, who knows where I'd be right now. So thank you for yeah. helping me, all of you, because I truly didn't think I could have been exposed. And then when I realized that yeah. what was happening with Cindy and what was happening with the other lady, Terry, was exactly what I was going through, it was like a big eureka. So I feel this group has saved my life. So thank all of you. and and. And I do think we need to reach out to the youth. Well, uh, I'd like to talk about the youth just for a minute. The youth are going to change and they can't, they can't see what this is going to mean yet uh, because they've been told, well, it's mostly older people that are going to be affected. And they, so they say, okay, well, it's not part of my life, so I'm not going to worry about it. Even if I go out and get the virus, I'm going to have a mild case and, and go on. And I understand what that their attitude is from that point of view. And, you know, even I remember having such attitudes when I was younger. But we need to remember the old saw, youth will be served often on silver platters. And um, they will change uh, their perspective because all this happy talk that we've been getting out of our administration uh, is just baloney. Um, in Italy, they've had uh, a death rate that's over 12%. I, I, I did a calculation on it yesterday. It was 12.7%. And um, 
you know, even though Governor Cuomo, for example, says, well, we're seeing, we're seeing progress on keeping the curve down, but what, what he's talking about is only that the hospitals aren't going to be totally overwhelmed, okay, as they are, are being in northern New Jersey right now. And, you know, if you're a young person out and have a motorcycle accident two months from now, you want to have a hospital around that's going to repair you. And, um, but the point is the numbers. I mean, looking at the numbers, um, we're, we're gaining 25,000, more than 25,000, between 25,000 and 30,000 new cases, new cases every single day. And so maybe we will get the statistic to the point where we're not totally overwhelming our healthcare system, but, but this disease is nowhere near being controlled. And by August, you know, well, some statistics say we'll, we'll have 160 million cases. And if that's true, then we're going to have five to 10 million deaths in the United States. And so up at, right now, we've had about 20,000 deaths in the order of magnitude is going to be monumental. People everywhere are going to know, every person in the world will know somebody who has died. And, um, and so, you know, we're, we're only at the beginning of this, you know, and, and we need to be aware that we're, you know, we're not only holding ourselves together, but we're in a way holding the world together by offering this sort of outlet where people can talk about what they're experiencing. But, I, you know, I hate to, I hate to be a, a bearer of bad tidings, but I think we have to realize that it's going to be hard. And I, I think it's Cindy is <laughs> shaking her head yes because she knows. Um, and uh, I'm also trying to hide my tears. Yeah, and I'm and Cindy, I I, I want to make sure we say to you before you get well again because I know that. Once, once you clear uh, yourself so that you, you're immune, that we're not, we may not see as much of you. I just want to be sure to thank you and all the nurses and doctors that you run into in the next year, because uh, I know most of, most of them didn't sign up for this. And the same is true, grocery clerks and delivery boys. You know, um, you know, when when I was in the Marines as a second lieutenant, um, the death rate for a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps during Vietnam was four percent, and so this is this is between double and triple that, and so all of a sudden, everybody in the country is in the middle of a of a war that is quite shocking and and uh, we we don't have a, we're, we're not even swimming in the chaos of it yet we're we're all trying to stay surviving until we can swim and uh so i just i want i, I hope that you'll express to your colleagues how much we all appreciate their hard work it's, uh, yeah, I this lot of love and, and 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 it is very very hopeful. Hopeful is the theme of uh, I think today's uh, uh, call maybe because because when I'm I'm looking at you guys when Nancy is recovering and and uh, uh, sorry Cynthia Cynthia is recovering and and. And she's sharing and talking, and this are this is this is like balancing out my psyche. Like I am just blessed to see her uh, uh, talking and even crying. That is, it's it, it just so soulful. It's it's just so nice. And 
I feel blessed because of it. So, other day I, I kind of got angry on few kids over here. Like, so I said that, and I was I was actually pissed off that day because I I had to tell this to a couple of people and I had to I had to draw circles for for one auntie who sell vegetables here. I'm like, auntie, this circle nobody moves and nobody understands. Like, I I don't speak local language here. So, so I, but they they know that if she if I am walking there they will all just disperse. So finally, like yesterday, I said that if you die, your body will not come to your family. Like, do you understand the intensity of it? Now you decide. Do you want to? Nobody will decide. You will be buried or you will be burnt. They don't care about it. So I and yeah, I was. My, my my voice was raised at that time even i think my blood pressure too but but after that they just got it like i just told them and after that they just got it so it was it was hard like hard truth y youth can digest not the glorified uh, um uh, versions of you know simplified things the moment things are so simplified it feels like there's something fishy in it like you are used to of this harsh truth. It kind of, kind of like, I think people of my, my friends, like we understand truth. Other than that, we just find the fishiness. We can't name it, but we can smell it. So as long as like we are being absolute honest, I think we will be able to communicate with the youth. But that, that honest has to be there the truthfulness has to be there because they they're young and they can they can sense it because they love you more you know they they know you more the elderly is right like, like we look for the wisdom we are not intelligent so much we don't have experience but we look for the wisdom and and that is needed to it's it's high time like people start talking to the youth like that they matter they do so, matter because thank you so much. I'll, I'm, I'm... they do matter because yeah. they're the ones that are going to be dealing with this 50 years from now when they have a pandemic and um, so uh, Kushbu uh, would you uh, offer um, your mantra now uh, because we're after two hours now and uh, we're going to bring this to an end for today, but we'll uh, continue on on Thursday. Um, so, could, are are you, are, do you, are you do you have yourself together so that you could offer um, your prayer for us? Yes. Yes. Kushbu is going to offer a Sanskrit mantra, which all of us have found very meaningful to us. Um, and uh, you can find her mantra freestanding in a two minute vi video on this YouTube channel, but um, go ahead, put Kushbu. Loka Samasta Sukhino Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Oh 
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much, Kushpu. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, have a good rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you all. And uh, Tim, I'll try to work out your video problems this afternoon. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Tim. All right. Take care. Bye -bye. See you soon. Bye.